to the basketball capital of the world, where today, the road to the Final Four stops right there, the RCA Dome in Indianapolis. If you thought Indiana already had enough storied hoop tales, think again, because we are poised to put some more shining moments in your basketball memory banks. So go ahead, feel the excitement. Go ahead and take part in the madness. Go ahead and be a kid again, like the rest of us, and cheer for the game, which somehow always seems to make us smile. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Pat O'Brien, and welcome to the Final Four show. Today we have a super semifinal doubleheader. The first game tips at 542 as Arizona makes its second Final Four appearance in the last four years. The Wildcats meet Coach Dean Smith's well-heeled North Carolina squad. UNC is making its 13th trip to the Final Four, second only to UCLA's 14. Then, 35 minutes after game one, the second national semifinal tips off with the University of Minnesota making its first ever appearance in the final four. The Golden Gophers look to continue their dream season against Kentucky. The defending national champion Wildcats have won six titles and are on the road to repeat. Joining me, a couple of fellows who know a thing or two about big games. Former Ohio State star Clark Kellogg was the 1982 Big Ten Player of the Year. And speaking of repeats, Duke coach, my, coach Mike Krzyzewski led his Blue Devils to a pair of national titles in 91 and 92 and has made seven Final Four appearances, third most all time. And what's it like, Mike? Well, first of all, I like that footage. Uh, <laughs> but if I'm a coach right now, I'm, I'm anxious to get going, but I'm nervous about my team. I'm looking and seeing how they're feeling so that I might add those finishing touches to get them at their best just before they take the court. And if you're a player, what are you thinking right now? Well, one thing for sure, Pat, the media request, obviously the ticket request, concerns about family travel plans, those are all in your rearview mirror. As a player now, you might have some anxious moments early on, but once that first good lap Lather is worked up. It'll all be about basketball one-on-one, -on -one, taking right. your guy, defending, scoring, and rebounding. One team has already arrived here in the Dome in North Carolina just a few minutes ago. Got off the bus underneath here. The Tar Heels winners of 16 in a row, guys. And what do you see there? They got their faces on. They have faces oh. and music. I wonder what kind of music they listen to. A variety. None of the coaches ever have those headsets on. <laughs> it's jazz, gospel, maybe even a little rap going on in there. Dean Smith does not travel with his team traditionally, and so he is not there. He'll come another way, lets his players arrive by themselves and leaves them alone with their thoughts for the time being. Our second national semifinal features a battle of number one seeds whose styles of play are as diverse as their head coaches. Yesterday, George Raveling spoke with Minnesota head coach Clem Haskins and Kentucky top cat Rick Pitino. Clem is Monday at 6 on News Channel 3. of Indianapolis plays host to college basketball's showcase event. Arizona and North Carolina up in the first national semifinal, followed by Minnesota against Kentucky. Welcome, everyone, and hi, everybody. 
everybody, Jim Nance. It is Final Four time. That means that the intensity is high, the tickets are impossible, and four teams harbor a dream of winning a national championship on Monday night. It also means that Billy Backer is along once again to analyze the action. And Billy, what about this quartet we have here in Indianapolis? Jim, everybody knows there are three number ones here, but Arizona belongs as the number one the way they're playing. I don't think I've ever been to a Final Four where all four teams can win both games. That's why it's going to be so exciting here today. Well, the only team that was not a number one seed is Arizona, a four seed coming out of the southeast region. But the Wildcats going against North Carolina, a team that in the opening game of the season, Arizona beat by 11. What do you read into that? Well, Arizona and North Carolina did play the first game of the year, but it has absolutely nothing to do with today's game. Matter of fact, the coaches didn't even show their teams the, the films of that game. Even though you see the stats right there, the things that are different, North Carolina's entire style of play is different. And Miles Simon didn't even play for Arizona. So I think we're going to see two different teams. Who knows what the outcome's going to be? One thing that has been pointed out all season from that opening game, Mike Bibby in his college debut had 22 points, and he continues to play with all kinds of savvy for a freshman in this tournament. He's been quite remarkable. Well, Jim, just a year ago, he was one of the outstanding high school players in America. We've seen his penetration time and time again, but he's also proved to be an outstanding perimeter shooter. When the ball's in his hand, Arizona really creates an offense. And how about Antoine Jamison, North Carolina's leading scorer and rebounder? There's nobody that's come onto the basketball scene on the college level with the quickness and the great hands inside of Antoine Jamison. He is very difficult to guard, but today we're going to see Bennett Davison, who gets off the floor just as quick defensively in the best one-on-one -on -one matchup of the series. All right, starting lineups and opening tip coming up. Final four from Indianapolis in just a moment. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA and North Carolina. The Wildcats finished fifth in the Pac-10 this year, but it made it through the Southeast, coming back from 10 down with seven minutes left in the opener. Then 10 down with 14 minutes to go against Charleston, knocking out Kansas, and then Providence in overtime. North Carolina out of the East, fresh off of winning the ACC tournament. Then beat Fairfield, coming back from 7 down at halftime. Colorado, where Smith broke Ruff's record. Cal, and then Louisville in a blowout. For the 20th year at the Final Four, the public address announcer is Frank Fallon. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the RCA Dome for today's NCAA game between the Arizona Wildcats and North Carolina Tar Heels. Now let's meet the starting lineup for Arizona at forward. A 6'5 junior from Seattle, Washington, number 23, Michael Dickerson. For North Carolina at forward, a 6'9 sophomore from Berlin, Germany, number 13, Adamolo Okolombo. Arizona at forward, a 6'8 junior from Sebastopol, California, number 21, Bennett Davison. For North Carolina at forward, a 6'9 sophomore from Charlotte, North Carolina, number 33, Antoine Jamison. For Arizona at center, a 6'11 sophomore from Albuquerque, New Mexico, number 42, A.J. Brenlin. For North Carolina at center, a 7-3 senior from Maslis, Netherlands, with a 45, Serge Quicker. For Arizona at guard, a 6-5 junior from Fullerton, California, number 34, Miles Simon. For North Carolina at guard, a 6-6 sophomore from Oregon, New York, number 15, Vince Carter. For Arizona at guard, a 6'1 freshman from Phoenix, Arizona, number 10, Mike Bibby. For North Carolina at guard, a 6'2 junior from Greenville, South Carolina, number 3, Shimon Williams. And the coaches for Arizona in his 24th season, Luke Olson. For North Carolina in his 36th season, Dean Smith. Billy, time for the Packer points leading into the semifinal. Well, Jimmy, it's always interesting to try to size up what's going to happen in a basketball game, so let's take a look at it. Quick versus quick, I'm talking about Jamison Davison. Tremendous offensive player inside, a great defensive player inside. Who gets the upper hand right here? 
Point number two, the zone busters. North Carolina plays a great zone, but Arizona has great perimeter shooting. We're going to see Dickerson and Simon and Vivian and Terry off on the outside. Can they bust that North Carolina zone? Point number three, the youthful point. We're talking about two freshman guards. How many years have we said you got to have senior leadership in the backcourt? Here we have two freshmen that have played as well as anybody back there. Who gets the upper hand at the point position? And point number four, the high flyers. Great matchup here. Carter against Dickerson. Dickerson exploded in the first game against North Carolina. Can he control it here today? Sixty-six-year-old Dean Smith is 11th Final Four. Sixty-two-year-old Lou Olson, his fourth Final Four, the third time he's directed the Arizona Wildcats to basketball's promised land. Boudreau, Clockerty, and Patillo, the officials for Game One tonight. Jim John Clockerty is setting an all-time record as a referee. This is his tenth Final Four, the all-time leader. Arizona in the dark uniform tips to Simon for a two-point basket three seconds into the game. Not what was intended at all on the back tip. There's that Davison Jamison matchup. Could be the key to this game, particularly early. A lot of interior screening by North Carolina. Carter. Back of the rims. Wicker tipped it outside again, not as planned. Simon goes inside. Chased down by Dickerson. There are two taps, Jim, by North Carolina, both of which went to Arizona. Wicker controls it this time. Williams pull up three. The MVP of the East Region. The MVP of the ACC Tournament on quite a roll. Here's Davison. Guarded by Jamison, who will be whistled for that one. Jamison late getting there defensively. Davison not known for his scoring, but primarily for his running ability and defensive. But let's face it, North Carolina has no depth whatsoever, Jim. They'll come in with Ed Cota, and basically this is a six-man squad. That is it. So Bennett Davison, no not a score per se, 10-point average, but he did come up with a huge game. In the regional final against Providence, he had 14 points, 12 rebounds. And he held Austin Crozier to 12 points, below his 26-point tournament average. They'll be picking up high, realizing that Ed Cote is the primary ball handler for North Carolina, but he does not start. So they'll give Williams all they can handle. Jason goes to the lane, out to Okalaja. Jameson puts it back up quickly. Has anybody gotten off the floor quicker with hands than Jameson? Not that I've seen in a while. And that's what you talked about, because Davison, is man he's matched up again, can also jump quickly. Bramlin comes up short on the flip. Ball on the floor. It'll be North Carolina possession. Now Jim, A.J. Bramlin has played great basketball in the NCAA tournament. Offensively, he's been really outstanding. Double figures and points and rebounds in almost every single game. But he has not played against a seven foot three shot blocker like Serge Slick. Whistle away from the ball. Is it holding on the inside? It's Davison on that matchup against Jamison. So they each have an early personal. Probably not a good foul for Davison because there was no chance whatsoever on that little pick and roll move for the ball to go that quickly inside. Cheap foul. Switch inside. Bramble it now with Jamison. See if North Carolina tries to get the ball to him. There he is. Carter, 10 on the shot clock. Jamison drives past Davison and travel. Beautiful help by Bramlett. North Carolina 
showing man-to-man, -man, but remember we talked about that opening game of the year. At that point, North Carolina was into a lot of trapping. Now they go back, show their zone for the first time. They're no longer a trapping team. They like to play inside the top of the key. Bibby steps out. Carter rips away the rebound. Williams ahead, and what a pass. Well, we remember in this very gym, the great pass from Bobby Hurley to Grand Hill on the lob. <laughs> yeah. This one wasn't quite as spectacular, but close. That, too, happened early in the game, but at the other end of the floor. That's as good a lob as you can ask for from midcourt. Good hands by Okalaja. Simon, who had 30 in the regional final against Providence. Here's Dickerson. Way off the mark. Gives Wicker some credit on that. Although it was not a shot block, it was shot altered. Jamon Williams again. Jamison puts it back up and in. Jim, I will say this time and time again. People watching him for the first time, you will not see a player get off the floor as quickly as Jameson does with those great hands. Already with six. Now Bibby spins out. North Carolina showing superiority off the glass early in this ballgame. Zwicker outside. He will take that shot, which makes it difficult to play Jamison inside because you must go out hard to double down. North Carolina goes zone, changing defenses here early in the first half. So the 7 3 center puts Carolina up by seven. Time for Dickerson to get off, Jim. They've got to get him scoring. Stolen away. Two on one. Carter's a finisher. And one. Foul on Bibby. Now, Lute Olsen is waiting for the TV timeout, but this one is something he's got to be very careful. He looks up there and says he's got a timeout coming shortly. How about this pass, Jimmy? Right at midcourt. Jamison going up there. Beautiful hands, to be quite honest with you. Technically, it was almost over the it, cylinder. He sure was, because that ball was real close to going in. And there's Carter. I said he's a great finisher. Lute Olsen getting his timeout. TV. A 20-second timeout. They'll get the full timeout should they make the free throw, should Carter make the free throw to complete the three-point play. Carolina has won 16 straight. Its last loss was two months ago today, January 29th against Duke. All right, they did not lose a game in February or March so far. And, Jim, what we see is great superiority so far by North Carolina off the boards. This is a very big basketball team, particularly with Zwicker in the middle. That uh, flawless February was the first one for Carolina since 1977, a year the team advanced all the way to the national championship game. Losing to Marquette, now McGuire. And Jim, remember one thing for Arizona fans. They were behind by 10 points in two games right off the bat in this NCAA tournament and came back to win. And both were in the second half. Simon, no whistle. There's Wicker again, plays with the ball way above his head, doesn't bring it down. Coda lost it, and Carter's there. Big concern right now by Lute Olsen. His young team, without one senior that plays, in some trouble here early. And North Carolina loves to pack that zone when they get a lead. The next stoppage in play will be the TV timeout. Olsen's holding on for it. He's already had a 20. Davis in a turnaround, and that breaks the drought for the Wildcats. Very few players in the country can elevate as quickly as Davison, so Zwicker wasn't the problem that he normally concerns players with sitting down in the middle of that zone. After 10 unanswered and four minutes without scoring, now Zwicker shot by Davison. Davison. And there's the whistle. Out of bounds, it'll be Arizona ball. Out of the timeout. Carolina with eight rebounds to only two for the Cats, and twice they've lobbed for sensational baskets early. ...of the tournament so far for Arizona. Dean Smith broke the record 
against Colorado and he was surprised on his coaches show the next day with a jersey from his team. Jim interesting at North Carolina in the Dean Dome you get your jersey hung if you've been a two time All American or National Player of the Year. I wonder if Dean allowed him to hang his jersey in his own arena. It will happen one day. You I can hope be so. sure of that. Here's that zone packed in. Nice lob. Back door to go and they connect Bibby to Simon. Excellent screen against the zone. Dickerson Carter. Boy, there's some great one on one matchups here. And there's Jamison with that quickly. Oh, no good. Third try, Jamison short. And Bibby comes out of the pack. Good block out by A.J. Bramlin. Simon passes up the three. Jamison travel. He had the little jump shot, Jim, and he's got to understand North Carolina is very good at taking charges, whether it be from the weak side or a guy driving down the lane. When you've got the little 12-foot jumper, you got to take it. So Ed Coda, number five, the ACC Rookie of the Year. And assist leader. Some battle inside, Davis in second. Jim, it's kind of interesting. 1990, there was an ACC freshman guard that brought a team to the Final Four, Kenny Anderson. That's the last ACC freshman guard that's led the league in assists. Coda coming right in behind him. The only Cole other, New York. the only other freshman to ever do that in the ACC was Jeff Jones at Virginia. Freshman to lead the conference in assists. I can't believe that Davison is still in the game. Go against Arizona. Jim Davison, very dangerous to have him in the game. Let's see if Lute Olson's going to substitute him. He's got two fouls now. They and call that on Dickerson, Billy, not Bramlett. And it is. Davison's going to sit down. Nice precautionary move here by Lute Olson because Jamison is so difficult to guard. He'd pick up that third early here in the first half. You saw Eugene Edgerson come in, freshman from New Orleans, number 33 for the Wildcats. Also very athletic, good leaper, but he gives up a lot of size now on Jameson. Seventeen to eight, Tar Heels. Back in Shaman Williams. Williams for Carter. Now this is a substitution pattern that really doesn't hurt North Carolina at all because Williams, although he can play point, likes to play the second guard. Well, we say they only go six deep. They go to a seventh man, Maktar Jai. 6'9", junior from Senegal. Well, Jim, I'll give you an example. Other than Terry coming in the game, other than the six that pri play primarily, out of 2,651 points, the rest of the members of the team have scored 151. I'll give you an idea about a lack of them. Die in there to take up minutes and space. Little mismatch here, Terry and Okalaja. Three white, Shaman Williams raising his hand after committing his first. Well, one of the things that the players should pick up here quickly, that the offside official is watching hand checking away from the ball. That's the second call made like that today. Simon, three pointer. That is something in Arizona's last two visits to the final four has really troubled them. Three point shooting. Simon pure with that one. Bibby steals it. And kicks it. No call, though. They didn't call the kick. Nice move. Kept it alive, but Okalaja gets it over to Jai to Williams. Well, that was a brilliant play by Bibby. He had to figure if a teammate was coming, get it up high. Edgerson with two Tar Heels on him. Gets it over to Bibby and out of traffic. Jump there. shot. He'll take the three. Jameson really running down court, but Edgerson is quick as well. Going a little out of sync here. Really out of sync. Twice Jai is that pass go right by him. Carolina ball. We'll bring back in Carter. Carter for Okalaja. Well, as I said, Jim, you'll see the block on the inside. Beautiful job, but Jai in there to play defense, rebound, take up space, give some breathing room for Zwicker or Okalaja. Donnell Harris in for Bramlett. Harris, a 6'11 sophomore. He's 
started in that first game of the season against North Carolina. Had nine points and seven rebounds. Davison, of course, a junior college transfer, not quite ready at that point to step in the starting lineup. So three subs on the floor for Arizona, down six. Dakota just beat the shot clock, and Arizona sees it might have the numbers. Simon will pull up. He'll take that three. He's got two of them. Very bad defensive maneuver there by North Carolina. Simon with 30 points, the MVP of the regional. Hits one jumper. You can't, can't let a man like that who's got the ball go unguarded. He has 10 of Arizona's 14. Williams blocked by Terry. Out to Simon. Ahead to Terry. Coda with the quick hands. Makes the theft. Game a little frenetic right now. To be quite honest with you, that's what Arizona's like. How about that move? To avoid the charge. Carter just kind of slid right around the body of the defender for two. Oh, Vince Carter put on a little bit of a dunking show here yesterday, Jim. One of the real high flyers in the college game. And the highlight of uh, open practice before some 25,000. Simon, he tried to draw the charge, I mean, draw the defensive play by Carter. Watch this! Oh, is that almost over the top of the backboard? Carter still got a hand on it. Dean Smith probably would like to have a timeout, but he doesn't like to call him. His team is really kind of out of sync here, going for the spectacular as opposed to the solid. And that's not the way they win. Terry traveled. And the under-12 timeout. Simon has hit four out of six from the field. This is the seventh time he's been to a Final Four, but the first is a player. His father brought him six times, and he's enjoying the stage, trying to bring the cat back. But watch what happens. A solid screen from the back. Another screen over here. Here comes the man through the lob to the top. One screen, two screens, weak side, right over the top. Perfect execution against the zone. North Carolina ball leading 19-14. Jim Nance, Billy Packer from Indianapolis. Davison back in the game, Jim, with two fouls. Watch quickly if Jamison touches it. Carter turn around. And Harris took it away from Zwicker. Arizona has the numbers. There's Davison, baseliner. And Williams with the rebound. Dickerson, who has five 30-point games on the year, Jim, has not scratched yet. I always think it's important to go ahead and get your leading score in the game. And they've gone a half of a half here, and he has not scored. Jamison rejected by Harris. Dickerson's only attempted one shot, and he had 31 against Carolina the first time. Here he is over Carter. As you called for it, he got the chance, but wild on the shot. Both of his have missed by a lot. Fun to watch Davison and Jamison. Boy, they're so quick off their feet. Speaking of quick, no one's quicker than Terry with the hands. Three-pointer. Brings it to a two-point lead for North Carolina, 19-17. Arizona on the year is 192 threes out of their key perimeter shooter. Terry being one of them. They're three out of six today from beyond the arc. Carter plus one. That's, That's Davison's Davison. third. As I said, a big gamble by Lou Olson to bring him back here. He's going to have to sit down. This really hurts Arizona. Davison so quick off his feet, but he's picked up three. One cheap one and two in attempts to make the, uh, blocks. And this was not on Jamison. This was on Carter. Coda, just a pinpoint passer. Coda moving on Kenny Smith's all-time season record. Four assists. He came into the game needing only five to pass him. Carter goes out. Okalaja back in. Carter with 11. North Carolina gets out of the zone, goes to man-to-man. -man. Dean Smith looks like he wants working margins of certain points to go into that zone. Harris pinned. Skip pass to Bibby. Freshman on freshman. Bibby comes up short. Two-point shot. Foul 
Bones Wicker. Near the conclusion of every NCAA tournament game, we select a Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. To date, Chevrolet has contributed almost six and a half million dollars to the scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. Simon back in, coming off his career high 30, already with 10. Bibby out for a blow. And North Carolina goes zone. They've got everybody down inside the three point lane right now. Dickerson on the board with his first three. He's been slumping from outside, making only three of 21 in the tournament. There's a block without a whistle. North Carolina going to the lob a lot, and as quick as Arizona is off the floor, I'm surprised. That pass thrown away. Chance on that possession to tie the game. Jim, you mentioned three-point shooting, and, and you mentioned previous Final Four. Steve Kerr, one of the great shooters of all time in college basketball, came into the Final Four and had a horrible shooting situation. And, and did Stoudemire... When he came into the Final Four, did as well. And so that had been the problem for Lute Olsen in previous Final Four trips at Arizona. Not the with a behind-the-back slam. What a spectacular first half by Carter. Perimeter shooting against lob passing. Four times they've lobbed it inside for dunks. Bramlett, bounce pass, Harris open. Dean Smith can't believe a little pick and assignment. The switch by North Carolina. Nobody picked up. 24-22 North Carolina. 7.30 remaining. First half. Okolaja takes the jumper and commits the foul, bumping in the Simon. You notice how North Carolina's fouls, Jim, have been picked up trying to go for loose balls. Arizona much quicker getting to the spot. Carter with 13. And how about that one? It looked like, well, it looks like so far the dunking exhibition he put on yesterday <laughs> to the delight of all the fans in practice. Two-point lead, Tar Heels, first half. We'll be right back. Ranger to Saturday night on CBS, enjoying the final four. Chuck Norris, North Carolina leads by two, and Arizona with possession. Simon ties it at 24. A fearless scorer, Jim. He pointed out in the regional, he's not a great shooter, but he's an outstanding scorer. And how about this? A little zone defense by Lute Olsen. Swicker stepped on the end line. Arizona can take the lead after being down 11. Nice change up by Lute Olsen. Jim, he was to a Final Four in Indianapolis before, but not with Arizona. 1980. That's right. He brought Iowa in here. He lost to the uh, eventual national champion, Louisville Cardinals. Yes, he did. And then he lost to Purdue in the consolation. What was the consolation game then? Had the great Ronnie Lester was hurt. Unfortunately, they didn't come in at full strength. Coda back in for Carolina. Arizona looking for the lead. North Carolina changing their zone a little bit here. Jamison running the baseline. Terry off on the three. Tipped around on the floor. And they call a foul instead of a tie-up situation. I think it's going to be Dickerson reaching in on Coda. Coda's hands are so good and strong that even a guy like Dickerson can't pull it away from him. That's the sixth team foul, the second on Dickerson. Billy, you were talking about the errant shooting by Arizona in its other two Final Fours to complete that thought. Steve Kerr was 2 out of 12 from 3. Right. And Damon... Stoudemire was 2 of 13 down in Charlotte and, and back in 94. And Reeves. Reeves was 0 for 9. 0 for 9. So there you had, you know, their, their big weapons. And remember, if I can remember in that particular game, Damon Stoudemire, Jim, remember the only one he made was at halftime was like a throw. Almost midcourt. Yeah. And if you factor in Kenny Lofton going 0 for 3 from 3, those uh, four athletes went 4 for 37 at the final four from three-point range. So their best weapon became really a deficit for that game. They're having better success, we might add, tonight from three-point range. Arizona doing a fine job in a defensive board. Dickerson, not that time. North Carolina got a little bit too aggressive when they got that lead. Second time, Flicker takes his jumper. Jamison almost tipped it in, and Carter trampled Simon. 
Simon was recruited for some time by the University of North Carolina. He wanted to go there. That was his dream. He used to wear Carolina T-shirts and baseball caps as a young man. Jai comes back. And uh, Simon missed the first 11 games for academic suspension this year. But during that time, paid his own way to road games to see his team play. Back to man-to-man -to -man goes North Carolina. Simon recognized it. Real student of the game. He got a letter from Dean Smith his junior year in high school. Said, we have enough players at that position. Dante Calabria, Donald Williams. You're going to be a great player, but I don't think we're going to have room for you. They take it away. Sensational defensive play. You got it. Charge on Shaman Williams. Not a good decision by Williams after making a great defensive play. Good job getting back by Bibby. Second on Williams. And here's a shooter, Jimmy. Never should go in there. Pull up. He's got men trailing in behind him, particularly Jameson. If he pulls up at the foul line, he hits the trailer for an easy layup. Made it easy for Bibby. All right, this is the fourth trip with Arizona looking to take the lead. Game's been tied at 24. Dickerson, quick first step, and he'll go to the line for two. Jai with the foul. And as Lou Olson says, the quickest first step at Arizona since Sean Elliott, and Carter can attest to that on that move. Arizona has uh, really won the battle at the line during the tournament, Billy. Well, you love to see that, Jim. It means that you're going to the offensive glass. You're handling the ball well. You're taking good shot selections. And Dickerson recognized right away that there was no weak side help. And by the time you get there, if you're not planted for him, he'll be at the basket. Arizona's first lead since 4-3. Swicker back in for Carolina. Dickerson was Arizona's top man in the NCAA tournament last year, averaging over 18 points a game in the tournament. Dickerson back for Arizona for Harris. 26-24 Wildcats. North Carolina was in control of this game early, and they got a little bit too overzealous trying to make the big play. 22-9, Zona. After trailing by 11, Jameson and Bramlett got a piece of the hand. Bramlett would be much better off being assigned to the guy playing in the low post. When he has to go out and chase, he's not Davison and he's not Harris. So the second team all America, Antoine Jameson, sophomore from Charlotte, North Carolina, will shoot two. He's had 29 career double-doubles. You know, I give you a stat that you know you read so much when you're doing these teams. I couldn't believe this one. And Jameson becomes the first back-to-back -back North, North Carolina ACC first team guy since Brad Doherty, way back in the 85-86 period. Of course, he did it freshman sophomore years, which is quite an, quite an accomplishment in that league. Then back to the zone with Jameson running the baseline. Inside five minutes, first half, game tied. Stolen away, and Carter's off. Oh, that's an intentional they got to call that. Grab them by the jersey. They're going to count the basket. Let's see if it's intentional. Now, if the foul was called, and it should have been intentional, Jim, before the basket, I think you have right here an intentional foul. Right there should have been intentional, and the basket should not have counted. Don't agree with that call at all. Here's the foul coming up from behind, not playing the ball. That's intentional. And the whistle was there, too. Absolutely. This basket should not have counted. Should have been intentional. Two shots and the ball out of bounds. 16 for Carter. His high was 26 against Wake Forest. Rob over Swicker. That's asking a lot to go well, over the 7-3 anchor. It's the same play we diagrammed before, but there was no screen, no back screen on Zwicker, so he could stay there and cause a problem for Simon. Tough 
pass. North Carolina ball. They turn it over. Does Coda have some hands, Jim? Not only off the dribble. We'll see the play here. Great save by Williams. Coda taps. Slicker on the run. Not that agile. Back screen, screen for Jameson. Good adjustment by Arizona. Slicker. Jumper for two. Big center has four. Carolina by five. Seven unanswered. And a steal and the numbers again for the heels. Carter takes the middle. Coda on a wing. Back to trailer. Jamison can't find it. North Carolina not converting on two terrific opportunities on the break. Dickerson open three. Bramlett held from behind by Jamison. Well, the Slicker putting his hands down. Which one got the call? Jamison seemed to be, like, pulling him down. I know what Jamison's complaining about. He felt he was undercut on the last jump shot he took on the other end. Dean Smith will be forced at 333 to get Jamison out of there if that's his second. It is his second. Okalaja comes in for him. Bramlett, not a very good free throw shooter at the line for a one and one. He's only 49%. He's tried all kinds of new methods. Now he's gone with the one foot in front of the other routine. One and one. Bramlett smooth on that one. Then we talked about Bramlett. South Alabama, 9 points, 16 rebounds. He comes back with 12 points and 15 rebounds against College of Charleston. Then 12 and 12 against Kansas. Played well. Solid stroke with those two. Arizona's Bibby has been shut out so far. And the Cats are down three. Four from the field, 25%. Jim Carter has had a fine uh, NCAA tournament as well. Opening game against Fairfield, he had 22 points. And, of course, had an outstanding game against Louisville with 6 for 10 shooting, 18 points, 7 rebounds, and 5 assists. So uh, he's playing outstanding basketball. Both teams, the Davison Jamison matchup, we will not see the rest of the half. Both players in a little foul trouble. Williams has deflected and stolen. Bibby 0 for 3 from the field. Four stop, way off. Dickerson gets it once. Out to Dickerson, gives it up outside. Dickerson. Say it was off Arizona. Three Tar Heels around him. Bramlett touched it last. Dickerson a little hesitant on that jump shot, Jim. We saw him have uh, one of his poorest games against the University of Michigan. An overtime loss that uh, Arizona had up against Michigan. Uh, he's starting to pull back a little bit on that jump shot. Not shooting it loose. That was a day, though, he kept on shooting and he never found the touch. He's one for five today. Okalaja, not a good shot. Swicker. Rejected in Arizona. Bramlett continues to play well. Both ends of the floor. This could tie it. Terry from the corner. Akerson got away with a reach in. Yeah, good block out by Okalaja. They're not giving Williams a jump shot. Has to shoot most of his jumpers off the dribble today, and he likes to shoot it in a standstill position. He's only one for four. with the quick hand. He snags it. Got a man on the wing. It's Bibby. Three-pointer for the top. There's Bramlett again doing a great job on the boards. Bibby now 0 for 5 shooting. So you've got Bibby and Dickerson a combined 1 of 10. And they're only down 3. Final 2 minutes of the half. Dickerson and a half. North Carolina player Jim showing some signs of fatigue right now. You can see there goes Carter down. They're, they're really tired. Simon and Harris for Arizona into the lineup. Carter wants out. You see the play on the inside. Carter going up. Nothing left. He goes down and sits there for a while. Now, one of the things that will help North Carolina, timeouts, TV timeouts are 2 minutes and 30 seconds. 
so double what they are normally, almost like a mini halftime. Vivi again. Yes. That ties it at 31. Vivi hitting for the first time at the Final Four. They had missed their last 10 shots. Another pass off the backboard after hitting the front of the rim last time. Simon in Arizona's back in front. Jim, fatigue is really getting to North Carolina, and it's costing them dearly. Good job by Simon. Arizona, as we knew from the beginning, quicker and deeper, and really taking advantage of it here in the last two minutes of the first half. See, Spicker just doesn't have any quickness left. Simon beats him. Just like a boxer, he can sense when his opponent is getting tired, and he strikes. Spicker second. And Simon can complete the three-point play. 15 for Simon. And everybody runs away. See, they run away from Coda just going down court. If you're Dean Smith, you think you might want to take all of this possession. And he is. He's pulling it out. But they will have to give up the ball. There's about 20-second differential here. Well, you get tired, you get confused. We saw Arizona Providence at the end of the regional final game. Williams, that's not his shot, but he has to do it off the dribble. In the final 20 seconds, Arizona could go for the last shot. Go to the locker room with the lead. They're up three, they can increase it here. Great job by Arizona. Give Terry a lot of credit. He came off the bench, did it on both ends of the floor. Bibby starts the drive at seven. Bibby through the hands of Bramlett. Williams not in time. The last eight points of the half to Arizona. After a 15-4 start for the Tar Heels, Arizona outscores them 30-16 to the remainder of the first half. Kind of like the run in the first game that they had, Jim. At the halftime, that game was tied. Michelle Tafoya is with us. Michelle? All right, guys, a nice run to finish up the first half after North Carolina got off to a hot start. What changed for you? Well, we were not getting back defensively and giving them opportunities in transition, so we just took took another guy off of the glass and said get back and we'll battle him with two two guys on the boards but the big thing was that we started knocking down some shots so uh, uh you know the guys the guys will come after people so now it's a matter whether we hit the shots or not all right coach good luck thank you thank you jim let's send it back to you lute olson was hired as the arizona coach 14 years ago today He's 20 minutes away from advancing to the national championship game. Arizona 34, North Carolina 31 at halftime, and CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA basketball championship will continue after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA national semifinal game. The odd man out, Arizona, the number four seed, the only one playing with a group of number ones, goes on an 8-0 run. They lead Carolina 34 to 31. Hi again everybody, I'm Pat O'Brien and welcome to Pennzoil at the Half and joining us throughout this Final Four weekend are Clark Kellogg and Coach Mike Krzyzewski. Let's talk first about the courage of Miles Simon. They're down 15-4 and he keeps them in the game. Well, Arizona Arizona was almost knocked out of the box. Miles Simon's toughness and courage. You see this play. We got Miles Simon circled. Arizona pushes the ball up the court. That's what they've been doing the whole half. But watch when he gets it, Pat. Clark. He shoots it over 7-3 Zerg Swicker. He's telling our guys, his guys, let's get going. We can do it. And that's why I call him my silent assassin. 15 points and four rebounds. And they have one on the other side, too, and Vince Carter with 16 points. Yeah, well, Vince Carter got a lot of high-quality shots. As a friend of ours, Gus Johnson, would say, he shot a bunch of zero-footers. Let's take a look at him in transition here. Gets behind the defense. Nice lead pass by Coda and the flush by Carter. We're going to take a look at him in the half court. Arizona did a lot of fronting inside and overplaying with no pressure on the ball as a result. Vince Carter able to get to the basket. As a matter of fact, Bennett Davis.
Davidson picked up his third foul on that one. Here we take, take a look at another cut, and Vince Carter, when you shoot those shots that close to the hole, you're going to shoot a high percentage, six of eight for his 16 points. And you can make a case for sloppy ball on both sides of the fence here, can't you, Mike? Yeah, you can, Pat, but what Arizona's trying to do is they're trying to run on every occasion so that North Carolina won't stay on those offensive boards and maybe wear out a taller North Carolina team. Carolina had 15 points off 11 Arizona turnovers. Well, it's springtime, and that can only mean one thing. It's time for the presentation of the Chevrolet Coach and Player of the Year Awards. Since the 1981 and 81 season, Chevrolet has been presenting this award, and past recipients have included... Billy, let's take a look at the coach's edge uh, from the first half. Jamison in the loop. Well, Jim, when North Carolina was executing well, here we see Jamison solid screen off. He gets a back screen in here. Jamison goes the loop. Perfect pass on the inside for the loft. That's when North Carolina was rested and fresh and executing. They let the game get away from them from that point on, and it hurt them. Now we see the replay. Solid screen by Jamison. Williams comes off. Back screen by Carter. Perfect pass. Jamison delivers. Three-point lead by Arizona. This was the point when they met earlier in the season where just coming out of the locker room for the second half, Arizona went on a 21 day run. They've already enjoyed one big run. What do you think will happen right now? Well, Jim, I think, first of all, a foul trouble is going to be really a key here. We see Jamison coming into the game. Davison will be playing. Davison has three fouls on him. North Carolina, I'm sure, got a lecture about getting back to playing solid basketball. If you're Lute Olsen, you really got to like the guts of your club. And I think Mike Krzyzewski said it well. Simon showed the guts that were necessary to get his team back in the game. There's Davison. He did not play the last 9.22 of the first half with the three fouls. Good decision by Simon. He realized Vicker was in there rested, ready to block that shot. You got the two top scorers, man to man here, Simon and Carter. Dickerson up the corner. And Bramlett, good job of taking the ball away, but comes up short on the lay in. Good block out. Is that going to be Davison's fourth? Yes, it is, Jim. He blocked out and pushed. 41 seconds into the second half. I said foul trouble could be a key, but I didn't think it would be within 41 seconds. Tough break for Lute Olsen. So Davison with four. He's got to feel like he hasn't even worked up a sweat. Lute Olsen walks all the way down to the end of the bench and dumps the drink in. He knows how tough that was. He hardly played in the first half. Same kind of situation. On the box, Jamison rejected by Harris. You know what happened there? Harris was actually out of position. Jamison was wide open, and just as he elevated, Harris got back in position for the block. Arizona has blocked seven shots today. Carolina without a block. Dickerson, Carter manning up. Dickerson goes back out. Nice, smart play by Dickerson. Simon looking for a six-point lead. Harris at the other end. He got blocked. Got the block at one end and the hoop at the other. There is a huge differential in quickness in favor of Arizona in this game. Seems like every loose ball is theirs. Wildcats with the largest lead of five. Williams shakes free from jumper. Again, again, quickness a factor. Tie up, arrow, Carolina. Really in that first half, you take out the two stars, Carter and Simon, who are both six of eight from the field. The rest of the players in the game were 11 of 51, so some shaky shooting for sure outside of Simon and Carter. Now the one that really jumps out for me is Shaman Williams, the man that has been so good, but what's happening right now is Arizona's forcing him to put the ball on the floor before he gets a jump shot. He is now one for seven from the field. After hitting his opening shot of the game. Over six cents. Sticker back in the rim. Look at how Arizona pushes the ball up the floor. This is really going to wear down Sticker particularly. They take off after the rebound like it's some kind of sprint. They have an advantage in quickness at almost every position. There's some kind of contest at the other end. That'd be a pretty 
smart move by North Carolina to try not to push the ball up the floor. They need to get Zwicker right under that basket where he can have the advantage. The ball never touched Dickerson's hands. Turned it over to Carolina. Jim Okalaja not having a good ball game at all. He was 0 for 5 in the first half. A turnover there. Coda going to come into the ball game to try to set some semblance of order to the North Carolina offense. North Carolina players already bending over, grabbing their pants. Uh, you know, a sign that we always see of guys that are a little tired. It's only 17, 31 at the clock. I think two and a half minutes after the break, that wouldn't be a factor. Simon stopped his dribble, but the beat in the corner to Bramley. That sticker behind him. And the steal. Back comes Bibby with one. Quickness again. Three short. Been short on a lot of his shots. Carolina ball. If you're Lute Olsen, you almost like for North Carolina to get a couple of occasional break opportunities because it keeps the pace of the game at a style he likes. It's the third highest scoring team in the country. They'd like to play a game in the 80s or 90s. North Carolina, you go back to the first half, has missed its last nine shots. Cody's not going to look to take that outside jumper. the shot clock. Great penetrating. He was going to travel. He gave it up into the arms of Dickerson. Simon, long range three. What a strange rotation. Simon. Another ball thrown away. Harris battling inside. Put Jameson off balance. Lute Olson for 12 years, a high school coach in Minnesota and the Anaheim and Huntington Beach areas of California. Look at these teams in the second half. One of 14 shooting. Lute, five-time Pac-10 coach of the year. We documented they only won four games the year before he came to Arizona. North Carolina drops back into the zone in the out-of-bounds situation. Vicker gets Carolina's first block. But another loose ball for Arizona. The pace is so frenetic that North Carolina, you can see, completely out of sync here. Go back to the first half now, and it's eight minutes and 11 shots without a make. Jameson. One drops. And off and running... Simon picks it up with a soft touch. Arizona just far quicker. And Simon's the guy leading the way. He takes off and beats North Carolina down the floor, whether it's on a miss or a make. with 19 of their 36. Bibby to answer at the other end. Oh, 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 bank, and he laughs as he uh, turns around. He shakes his head in wonderment. Six for Bibby. Dean Smith wanting to get Williams back in the ball game. He realized he doesn't have a lot of perimeter shooting on the floor. to get it back. He'll head to the line for two. He is so quick on the recovery. We'll see the shot here. Bibby pulls up when you're square as he is coming right down there. Nice follow through on the shot, but he never called bank. But it was perfect. Huh? Didn't even hit the rim. Are you, are you sure he didn't call? No, it? I you guarantee hear he didn't call bank. He was smiling <laughs> on the way. Dickerson out. Harris out. Terry comes back in along with Edgerson. Jamison will shoot too. Then I realized that Terry did not have a big game statistically in the first half, only three points. But he really set the pace, giving him a nice three-guard setup out there. And North Carolina, a hard time matching up. It's time to start acknowledging that this Arizona team has had success in the tournament and shutting down an inside player from the opposition. You go back last year, Rafe LaFrance was 
shutout from the field in a Sweet 16 game, 0 of 4. Pollard did not have hit a shot in a Sweet 16 game this year, and Okalaja hasn't made one today. Absolutely. And Arizona leads by three. They're coming. One after the other. HBO's biggest season of box office hits. Jim, here's a case where practice doesn't make perfect, it makes permanent. There we see Miles Simon with this very unusual release in his shot. Look how he rotated that wrist, and therefore he gets a crazy rotation on the jumper. Doesn't hit that one, but as I said, not a great shooter, but some score. But he is 7 of 11 from the field today. Only one time in Dean Smith's 36 years as head coach at North Carolina has a non-conference opponent beat him twice in the same season. You remember? Villanova last year. He had that game in Philadelphia. Hacked on the shot. That's the only time any non-ACC team beat Dean twice in the same year. And Arizona has the chance to become the second today. That's the third on Williams. And Jim, we talk about the staying power of Dean Smith. He has now taken teams to the Final Four in four decades. It's kind of amazing uh, when you think about it. Miles Simon's sister is here. Sharice Strawberry. She's married to Daryl Strawberry. In fact, Miles has had a pretty good year for sports events, major events. He was in the dugout at the World Series. Now he's playing at the Final Four. There's Sharice. You know, when you think of this club, too, people talk about a fifth-place Pac-10 team. And everybody saw that the Pac-10 played so well in this tournament. But they had two tough losses, one in overtime to UCLA. Could have been a lot different if they had Miles Simon for the entire year and loot and win some of those close games. Four of their nine losses were by two points or less. Williams having a tough day is Williams. Great scouting on behalf, on behalf of Arizona to force him to put the ball on the floor. Nowhere near as effective when he can, as opposed to getting that standstill shot. Miles Simon has size on him, and that hurts him too. Cotto likes this situation. I think he can beat Simon off the dribble. Here he comes. Three-pointer, a clunker off the back. And Rim Edgerson rips it away. Five-point lead. Arizona continues to run. Simon driving on the corner. He's kind of slipped on the floor. Cota knocked it out of bounds. I'm going to go back to the start of this game, Jim. Maybe the best thing that ever happened to Arizona is North Carolina getting off to what looked like an easy lead and tried to go into a sensational style of basketball, which is really not their game. Jason Terry fakes the three. Bibby won't. He'll take it. He thought he made that one. There are some horrendous shooting stats. And Dickerson of Arizona, one of nine, missing his last six. Shaman Williams, one of eight for Carolina. Okalaja, 0 of five. Give some credit to the pace of this game. It's taken its toll on what they want to do offensively. Example, right there. Bramble reached in to make the steal, and Terry called a timeout. Terry, the steal leader for Arizona, set a new record this year in steals. That's a 20-second timeout. And they tied him up. The arrow still would have belonged to the Cats, but he saved the arrow anyway with a 20. Kenny Lofton, who just was traded, the former co-holder of that steal record. Dean Smith. Only losing year at North Carolina was his first. They were eight and nine. That was my uh, senior year in college, his first year at uh, North Carolina. And uh, you went you to know, the he, Final Four. Yeah, he, he actually struggled as well into his third and fourth year, Jim, and then turned things around. Great patience by the university to give him that opportunity, and obviously it really paid off for them. North Carolina, without the lead, has had to stay in their man-to-man. -man. They love to be back with the lead in the zone. A pass, Bibby retrieves. Bibby gives Arizona its largest lead. Arizona getting every loose ball, making up for the lack of good shooting. North Carolina, so far in the second half, two for 11. Williams cannot get free. 
And a turnover led Spicker too much. Okalaja coming back in. Spicker sits. Spicker, the only member of this Carolina squad that has a ring from the 93 championship. He was a red shirt Jimmy, player that year. He has written on the back of his sneakers today, 93, 97, number one. And he's going to have to do some work to put himself in that kind of position. Looking for bookend rings and championships. Down seven. Bibby can make it ten. Out. No numbers for North Carolina. Falls off the front of the rim. The quick hands of Bibby gets it. And again, every loose ball is Arizona. Simon too strong. Terry. Every loose ball is Arizona's. Simon Wilder yeah. puts it up. Anderson got it to go from under the basket. Dean Smith has to be getting frustrated, Jim. His club is not executing on the offensive end, and Arizona beating him on the glass and with everything that gets on the floor. Edgerson off the bench, the freshman with eight rebounds. 11 minutes to go, nine point Wildcat lead. Williams, good defense. They didn't alter his shot in the air. Williams can't get an open look today. One of nine from the field. No look pass. Ramon inside. Got a second try. Blocked from behind by Coda. That's a huge Ray. play. Bramlett's down. Coda driving. And cutting and scoring with a foul. I, I think Bramlett, he could have a cramp, Jim. Trying to help him out. This could be a very difficult loss. And Lute Olsen says, Davison, you're going back in there even with four fouls because Bramlett's going to have to come out. Just remember that play in 10.45 on the clock. Coda blocks the shot. First, Bramlett had a, an easy try, but Coda comes in from behind, swats it away, then scores at the other end, plus has a chance to make it a three-point play. Coda doing a good job down here. He is very adept at using the right or the left hand on the drive and gets by with it. This could be a five-point turnaround just when Carolina had to have it. That's A.J. Bramlett's mother and stepfather, Jim and Mary Laborde. Eddie Coda, ACC Rookie of the Year this year. Just a cramp is the report from the Arizona bench, so we'll likely see him again. Coda doesn't get the three-point play. And a few times, Vickers been in a position to be able to get a rebound. 47-40, Arizona. Davison on Spicker. Remember, has four fouls on him. Okalaja still hasn't scored. You wonder why he's taking that shot, Jim. When you're having a day that's this cold, give it up. That basket by Coda the last time down. First bench points of the game for North Carolina. Inside, 10 minutes to go in the semifinal. Back screen, converting is Jamison. The freshman Ed Cota stepping up and looking like the solidifying factor in North Carolina's offense. North Carolina goes zone. Look out, Simon. He's going to try to find a hole here. Bibby doubled up. No call. Terry three. Over the top. North Carolina ball. Here we see Coda. He's looked into Zvicker. That throws the defense with the eyes and then goes opposite to Jamison. Got a television timeout. Arizona was a layup away from going up 11. Instead, Carolina's come back to within five. Johnson was supposed to be in Acapulco this week for their annual Save the Marriage vacation. His wife, Bobby, of 43 years... Believe me, I know Bobby, and she'd rather be right here, I can assure you. Not only would Luke rather be here, but she would as well. Quite a fan. 
Five kids, 11 grandchildren, and all of them here in Indianapolis. As Luke's trying to get his first win on the final four stage, he leads by five with nine minutes remaining. Again, North Carolina only shooting 31%. He's taking consideration since 1970. He's only had three teams shoot under 50 for the year, much less for a game. Jamison knocked it out of the hands of Harris, so Carolina gets another shot on this trip. One of the few loose balls that went their way. How about Terry shadowing Williams? He just won't give him room to breathe, much less shoot. Throw it up. Slicker tried to follow up slam and jumped a little early. As Arizona has been able to stay in control of this game, North Carolina has not been able to get into their zone very much, which is their most effective defense. Good hustle by Okalaja. One of the best ways, Jim, to beat a team that likes to play a lot of zone is to beat it down court. And that's what Arizona has done effectively. Nice move right here. Bramlett can come back physically. And Lute Olsen would like to save Davis and Jim for that last three, four minutes because he can, uh, he's got one foul left to go. He'd love to have him available to Jamison. Yeah, a little trap by North Carolina for the first time. Bibby deep in the corner. Harris secures it. Simon blocked from behind. He's only one of eight in this half. He'll try again, three point shot. So he's gone cold. And a foul against Carolina. There was Carolina. They had Bramlett pinched, and instead it's a foul on Jamison. Another great job by Bramlett on the boards. We've got the under eight timeout. Jamison picks up his third. Carolina's down five. Is what you drive a reflection of who you are? Or is who you are a reflection of what you drive. The answer, of course, depends on what you drive. And right now, for a limited time, you can lease the 1997 Aurora by Oldsmobile for just $399 a month. A proposition worth reflecting on. Aurora. Billy, 47-42 Arizona. Look at the numbers. Now, Jim, this is a woeful shooting on behalf of both basketball teams. Give some credit to defense, but I would just say that they uh, are not throwing it in the ocean today. They got the right city, but the wrong venue. This uh, should have been played over at the old Brickyard, where they have the 500 here in town. Well, nobody's been bashful. They keep throwing them up. Probably when you take a look with 7.45 to go, the first team that can start burying some is going to pick this, and Simon's the man to do it. Simon says, let's go in front by a 50 to 42 as he nails the three and stole away Bramlett. Yeah, Bramlett hits Vicker in the nose. Vicker was flinching, and while he was, Bramlett was stealing the ball. 50-42 Zona. 7.25 remaining. Simon, tough shot, ball on the floor, and again, the Cats come away with it. I like what Bibby did there. He thought he could get Williams going for that pump fake. Bibby. Taking two threes out of the timeout to get their largest lead of the game. 11. And what's going on right now? Terry on Williams. If North Carolina going to make a comeback, they've got to figure out a way to free Williams up for some jump shots of his own. And Terry is just all over him. Davidson. Spicker. And he's it's the putback. Much needed. Six by Zvicker. Look at what Arizona does, Jim. They run Simon down one side, Terry the other, Bibby in the middle, so they keep this tempo going. Simon with the floater. Coming off that 30-point performance is Simon, where he was the MVP of the regional. Zvicker, most of his action from the outside, except for that putback on the last trip. Eight for Zvicker. And Simon coming off the 30 and getting 24 to this point. And look what Lute Olsen's doing. He's coming back with Edgerson and Dickerson, so he's coming back with fresh players. North Carolina has nowhere to go. Terry, three. Got a question to shot.
shot there. Carter breaks ahead, and that would have been an easy basket, but Terry got a hand on it. Terry so quick with the hands. On the wing, he passes up the shot. Vivian Stead will take the three, and he loves it, as does his mother, Virginia. North Carolina's got to have a tie. Second timeout by Carolina. Mike Bibby has knocked down a couple of threes in the last two minutes. Well, Jim, one of the things we talked about, you see Simon right there. He has set the tempo for this team. None of those guys, even not having a good shooting days, have been reluctant to put up the shot. Give you a good example. five minutes. Carolina had to come from behind against Cal, but not this kind of deficit. Shot bounces out off with the foot of Jamison. Well, what has happened to North Carolina is the fact that Williams never could get free for his jumper. Put a lot of pressure on other people to score. We're talking about a man that was the ACC MVP and the regional MVP just shut out today. Bibby with 11 second half points. Nice crossover. And a reach in on Carolina. Bibby set that up with a beautiful crossover dribble. And Spicker having to come over there. And now we're going to see, Jim, with 4.46 to go, Dean Smith would like to be in a situation where he's got the lead and can sit back in the zone. But now he's got to chase. And he's got to chase with tired players. Bibby again. Red hot. Well, he started the season with 22 against North Carolina in Springfield, and he's picking up right here where he left off. Okalaja's first basket of the game, a three-pointer. Arizona right back on the attack. That basket by Bibby had it for just a moment there, a 15-point Arizona lead. Now 12. Shakes free from Coda again. job by Edmondson to take away the fast break opportunity. Jamison banks it in. And he wanted the foul also. He's got so many moves inside, doesn't he? Oh, he is a great one. He turned against his body and altered the shot in the air. 348 remaining. He's going to give Dickerson a lot of credit today, too, Jim. He realized he wasn't having a big day, and he's been very patient offensively. This is a team without a senior playing. Dickerson, three-point shot, just doesn't have it today. And that another hustle play. By Carolina, Arizona ball. Coda knocked it out. Bramlett again hustling to the floor at six foot ten. They don't want to hear it at Carolina, but AJ Bramlett. The AJ stands for Aaron Jordan. Sound familiar? People make fun of you because you're fast, because you wear Zoom Air. Well, let's turn the tables. Let's pretend that I'm slow. I want you to insult me. Come on, Michael. You turtle. Ouch. <laughs> Let out the aggression. Hey, molasses. That kind of hit bang right between the eyes. Michael, come on. I can take it, take it. Like, Mrs. Butterworth. Mrs. Butterworth, she's slow. <laughs> Jerk. Okay, said that with conviction. <laughs> but I can take it. These aerial shots brought to you by Goodyear. 12th largest city in the country, and certainly a city that uh, had a vision. It has got some dynamic downtown area here. What a great host city, too. Look at the foul situation. Only three team fouls committed on each side, so a long way from the one and one. Arizona with the arrow. Each team with a 20 and two full timeouts. Ruth Olson on that sideline. One of four active coaches that have taken two or more teams to the final four. He has to use a 20 here to get the ball in bounds. You don't like to use those up. Remember the Providence game. 
And he brought back uh, the Providence game. Yeah. And that was a wild finish in Birmingham last week. And Arizona took some real suspect shots. Well, down they, the stretch. they did, Jim. We talked about the mental fatigue in that particular game. But remember, Providence did not have any timeouts left. Lute Olsen called that one timeout to set up the shot in regulation. It didn't go for Providence. And he, uh, I'm sure, schooled his players very well this week in regard to what to do if you've got the game in somewhat control. North Carolina going to trap a little bit here. 320 remaining. Arizona trying to get the championship. Tough to, tough to trap a quicker team, particularly when you're tired. Arizona never in the championship game. 310 away. Everybody talks about what Lute Olsen hasn't won, Jim, but you know what? He never lost the regional final. He was 4-0 regional finals. This could be the first game that he ever is victorious in the final four. Simon blocked from behind and the shot clock violation against the Cats. Remember, this was a 15-point lead. A moment ago by the, the, Arizona. It's down to 10. The ball never hits the rim here. It hits the glass, but not the rim. See? Good call. Jamison, seven unanswered by the heels. Nice dish on the inside. Linnea Smith, the flaw. See, he's got the nervous look going here with 235 remaining, and that's the fourth team foul. And there's Linnea Smith. And Jim, you wonder if Lute Olsen will come back with Davison with 2.35 to go. He's got one more foul to give up on him. And he could go back and be fresh on Jamison. Nobody guarding the man taking the ball out of bounds. Did he recognize the trap before it got there, which is good play. Bibby, three-pointer. Michael Bibby with 17. Seventeen in the second half, that is. Arizona's back in front by 11. Okolaja has not hit anything and a foul over the back by Carter. Jamison uh, will be called for that. His fourth. Two oh six remaining. A four seed has never won the NCAA championship. This is the seventh time a number four seed has made it to the final four, but no titles. Syracuse last year got to the championship game. Steal and stripped away. Back comes Carter for the dunk. Again, these loose balls, what put Arizona in the lead, now coming back to help North Carolina out a little bit. Jim, when you talk about Bibby with his 17 second half points, he was 8 for 13 for 22 points when they met in the first game of the year. Interesting to see North Carolina able to do something with pressure when Arizona much the pressure team right now. Carter on the reach in. Again, they're still uh, not in the one and one. That's the sixth. The next one will be the one and one. And people have talked about who's the best freshman you've seen this year, and I, you know, I watched it's been Bibby and a step more he's the best point guard I've seen play all year Billy. well I like Simon's judgment on that pass instead of throwing the dangerous pass to Bibby he hesitated this kid right here really understands the game look at him break free knew where the hole was out of the traffic twice and Carter will send him to the line one and one kind of interesting when Simon came back to Arizona after missing 11 basketball games they struggled a little bit as he started to break back in the lineup as a matter of fact our friend and one of the sharpest guys in basketball Rick Majerus said he thought maybe that Arizona was better without Simon but it turned out that Miles got a little upset with that comment and, and if he knew Rick better he would know that Rick never meant it in a, in a negative way just as a basketball observation but this young man obviously has made this team a lot better. One and one, Miles Simon. The first miss today at the line, Carolina ball. First miss at the, at the line by the Wildcats today. Nine out of ten now. Jim, if you're North Carolina right now, you need Coda penetrating. You need Williams sitting on a wing. Okalaja normally be out there for a three, but you need to penetrate, kick out, look for threes. 
No time to be working the normal offense. Carter shot blocked by Simon. Carhill ball. It's going to be very difficult to get off the three-point shot knowing that Arizona knows that's what you want to do. You've got to penetrate and kick it out. Jason Terry returns. Vicker checks in. Terry for Harris. And how about that nice move by Lute Olson? What he's saying, I'm going to play my three guards on you so I have quickness on the perimeter now, not worrying about power on the inside. Make that three-point shot even that much more troublesome. Exactly. Williams, they get one. That Bramlett kick running right at him. Again, Arizona not worried about North Carolina going inside. Bramlett has had a tremendous NCAA tournament. You know what, Jim? He's just he's just come to life since shattering a, a backboard just before the NCAA tournament in a practice. He had a piece of the glass, the shrapnel got lodged into his arm, took six stitches to heal the wound, but a lot of the players have talked about this metamorphosis by Bramlett ever since that incident. And, Averaging 11 points, 11 rebounds in the NCAAs. And a 16 rebounds he had against South Alabama tied an all-time NCAA record for Arizona. Dickerson can't convert. They've missed two front ends. Coleman has got the drive down the middle and kick out. One minute to go. Williams. Oh! Now one of 12 from the field. Has been the story of this game. He hit North Carolina's first field goal, did Shaman Williams. And let's talk about Williams in the NCAA tournament. He's been just outstanding. 17 points, 15 points, 12, 6 of 13 for 22 points against uh, Louisville. But he hasn't been able to get a shot off today. Good scouting by Arizona. Boda got one to go. And the timeout by the Tar Heels. It's a six-point game. With 52 seconds remaining. Ed Coda's stepfather, George, watching and anguishing. But it's not over. It was 15. It's down to six. The new Porsche Boxster is assembled at Zuffenhausen, Germany. Much the same way our original roadsters, the spiders, were assembled. wonder who builds other sports cars. The Boxster. Once again, there is no substitute. She packed my bags last night, pre-flight. Zero hour, 9 a.m. That house, two blocks from campus. 52 seconds away from really partying. But Jim, nobody can use the clock any better than Dean Smith. Over the years, this has been one of the key things that has won him more games than any coach that's ever coached in the college level. You can be expected that he's going to do everything he can now to draw fouls. Slow this game down. And for the last time, Arizona will shoot a 1-1. That's the ninth team foul. They brought in Charlie McNary, senior from Kinston, North Carolina. He was trying to draw a charge on Dickerson. The officials didn't go for it. Carter, Jamison back in. So the next foul, the rest of the way, Arizona will be shooting too, but this is a one and one They missed already two front ends. And you can see what Dean Smith is doing now. He's going with smaller players, taking Spicker out of there. by Arizona. They never are leaving Williams alone. Coda. They got three tries from behind the line and it's going the other way. Okalaja committing the foul. Can't ask for a better trip than that. Three attempts. Jim, as a coach, you try to teach and get your kids to listen. 
Dickerson had every reason to go for the loose ball. Instead, he realized he was matched up with Williams, never left him, and consequently, Williams never had the wide-open jump shot. We'll send Donnell Harris to the line to shoot two. He's a 57% free throw shooter. So if Dean Smith gets what he wants, that's who he'd like to have on the line. Williams today is one of 13, missed his last 12 shots. Didn't Harris hit two in the first half? Oh, no, no, that was Edgerson, wasn't it? Edgerson has yeah. had a big game. These two inside players come off the bench. Harris at some moments. Edgerson has nine rebounds. And look at who comes in the game with 27 seconds to go. Davison. That's about how much he played in this half before he committed his fourth. He'll be well rested for Monday night. They're 26 seconds from advancing to the title game. Bibby with a reach in. Well, you know why that uh, it doesn't hurt him that badly because obviously they're not even shooting yet. It's only the fourth team foul. Serge Vicker starting to show some of the emotions we see in the final four. Dakota. Oh! Loose ball, Bibby. He'll go long. How appropriate. They got them all today. And Simon dribbles it out of bounds. 12 seconds to go. And Lou Dolson looks over and says, guys, think about Providence. All we need is the ball. Carter, three. Davison will shoot two. was hired 14 years ago today, Lou Olson, hired by the athletic director, who's now the executive director of the NCAA, Dr. Cedric Dempsey. Hey, how about a guy being on a roll? Wendy Larry, who he hired to be the women's coach at Arizona, about that time, is the head coach at ODU, which finds itself in the championship game of the women's bracket. What a game, what a win that was last night. Carolina's 16-game win streak will come to a close at the Final Four. For the first time ever, Arizona is playing in the national championship game. twice killing two giants kansas and now north carolina let's go down to our man jim nance well i've got two of the happiest people <laughs> in the world right now bobby and luke the save the marriage vacation last week had to be canceled and uh, your team is just so fearless you held north carolina to a season low 31 percent from the field just how fearless is this squad 
Well, I'll tell you, they're not afraid of anybody, and they play that way. I mean, I was a little concerned when I look up and it's 17 to 4, but I didn't see any fear in their mind and their eyes at all. They were just they. So they got off to a good start. Fine, we'll get them. We'll get them back. Bobby, what was it like for you watching this? I can't tell you how thrilled I am. It's taken 40 years, but we're here. <laughs> Let's talk about a couple of your players, Ramlett and Bibby. Ramlett has come on so strong in this NCAA tournament, and what can we say about a freshman? Well, I'll tell you, with A.J., you know, he's he's really become a tough-minded young man also, and, and he had like four blocks in the first half where I thought he got the North Carolina guys looking where was he in, in, the, uh, in our defense. And I thought they did a fabulous job. Our guys did a switching that screen that's just been killing people down low. Our perimeter guys got good pressure on the basketball, so it's hard to find them. Uh, as far as Mike Bibby is concerned, I mean, what can you say? The, the guy that the guy that had the ice water in his veins down the stretch was uh, Mike Bibby. I I hope no one tells him he's a freshman. Look, one thing I want to show you, if we had a replay of it, when Davison got his fourth foul, I thought you were walking out of the gym. You kept right on going there. What were you thinking? Well, I told Bennett after the game that I was glad that he chose to, uh, today to rest <laughs> because we're definitely going to need him with a full effort on uh, on Monday. Well, you two have been a great team, so congratulations. Let's I know go. you want to join Thank the team. Congratulations, much. Luke, Bobby. They'll play in the championship game on Monday night. It's only the second time ever Dean Smith's been beaten by a non-ACC team twice in the same season. Courtesy of Lute Olson and Arizona. Let's go back to Pat O'Brien. All right, Jim, and a heck of a vacation for them and paid as well here in Indianapolis. Not a bad place to be, and they're going to be here a couple of more days. Coming up, the top seed in the Midwest, Minnesota, against the top seed in the West, Kentucky. That tips at 8.09. And in just a few minutes, we'll be getting you out to Butler University for the Gillette three-point challenge with a million dollars on the line for two separate shooters. Now, tonight's uh, Chevrolet players of the game, Mike Bibby of Arizona, 20 points, 17 of them in the second half. And North Carolina losing effort, Vince Carter ended up with 21 points with just five in the second half. And I'm joined by Clark Kellogg and Mike Krzyzewski. And we talked earlier about how loose Arizona looked and how loose uh, Lute Olsen looked in the game and it turned out to be an omen it was pat but their defense was not loose they played great great half court defense to stop a very talented offensive team by the university of north carolina we talked a little bit about size versus speed the one thing we didn't talk about was who was going to make the most shots well arizona <laughs> shot extremely well especially in the second half north carolina their top scorer in this tournament shaman williams only one of 13 shooting and i guess their two and three year program is out the door now right that's they're, right they're here they've arrived Coming up, the champs of the Big Ten, the Minnesota Golden Gophers, against the defending national champions, the Wildcats of Kentucky. Do you know about the... You've always loved playing with... But he came up short tonight against a tough Arizona team, and he's with Andrea Joyce. Coach, throughout much of this tournament, your guys were able to battle back, battle back in the second half. What was it about today? They just seemed like they couldn't get in sync. Well, I, actually, I thought we played great defensively, and I think that Arizona did as well. They stopped some inside shots. Uh, otherwise, we got Antoine the ball and lob passes. They blocked him. But still, uh, we had enough good looks to win, and they did too, maybe. But I thought both teams really tried hard. I'm proud of our team. Gosh, they tried very hard. We played unselfishly, and uh, it was disappointing because we thought maybe this could work out. What would you tell your kids in the locker room? Well, you know, that uh, we've had a great season, but I didn't really say that. I just said we try hard, let's learn from each experience, and we'll look back on it with this season with a lot of uh, satisfaction, but still uh, disappointed today because I, actually uh, I thought so many times we just barely would have a ball and then it wouldn't, and we wouldn't make a shot, and they might feel the same way. I, I don't know. It would be interesting to see that next game of Arizona or North Carolina, I felt, will come back and maybe and play well. All right, Coach, congratulations on a great season filled with many memorable moments. We thank you and the Tar Heels for that. Well, thank you. It's been awfully nice, Andre. Thanks, Coach. What a season for Dean Smith. Coming up after our second semifinal, stay tuned for Everybody Loves Raymond, starring Ray Romano. That's at 1030 Eastern tonight on CBS. And guess who's here? Everybody Loves Ray. He's sitting right here. Ray, how you doing? Good. Fine. Nice Thanks for you. having me. Is this your first Final Four? It sure is. I this I miss this in college. I never. We never went anywhere at Apex Tech. I'll tell you. <laughs> we were horrible. But if a backboard broke, we could put it up in no time. What's this like? A couple of headlines. One, Anthony Epps for Kentucky has really struggled shooting a three-point shot. He 
needs to have a big game. The other thing, Minnesota has to figure out a way to deal with Ron Mercer. Minnesota has to get a balanced scoring attack and watch the matchup of Eric Harris on defense on Wayne Turner when he's on offense. If, if Eric Harris can turn Wayne Turner's back, it'll have a big bearing on the game. All right, let's watch together. We'll send you back down to Jim Nance and Billy Packer after this message and a word from your very own local station. Enjoy the game. We'll see you at halftime.